So cementum is a calcified avascular mesenchymal tissue that forms the outer covering of anatomic root. Okay, not the clinical root, anatomic root. So it is forming the outer covering of anatomic root. This definition was given in Carranza. And um, we have basically two main types that is acellular and cellular. And it begins at the cervical portion of the tooth at the cemento enamel junction and continues to the apex. Okay. So it starts here and it continues to the apex. So it covers the root basically. So what are the physical properties of cementum? So the hardness is compared comparatively lesser than dentine, which is very uh, yellow color which lack luster which is light yellow color and which lack luster and lighter in color than dentine uh, however it may not be distinguished on base of color alone so the permeability of cellular cementum is greater than that of a cellular cementum we'll see in detail about these two with age or the advanced age the permeability of cementum decreases and the cementum is thinnest at cemento enamel junction that is here cemento enamel junction and it is thickest towards the apex so at cemento enamel junction it is 20 to 50 micrometer whereas at the apex it is almost mm, three or four times that is 150 to 200 micrometer so that's about the physical properties now let's see the composition so the basic dry weight uh, basis we can say 45 to 50 percentage of inorganic substances which consists of basically calcium phosphorus in the form of hydroxy apatite crystals that is a inorganic portion and whereas a 50 to 55 percentage of organic portions with uh, organic material and water so organic matrix of cementum basically consists of type 1 collagen type 3 collagen and other non collagenous proteins whereas the type 1 collagen is the majority just like periodontal ligament if we say by volume we can say 45 percentage of inorganic matter 30 percentage of organic matter and 20 percentage of water that of the first one was dry dry weight basis and this is by volume so there are two types of uh, or two sources of collagen fibers are present in cement one is sharpies fibers or extrinsic fibers which are embedded portion of the principal fibers of periodontal ligament formed by the fibroblast so we had studied the sharpie fibers in detail in periodontal ligament and the second one is fibers which belong to the cementum matrix they are intrinsic fibers and produced by cementoblast okay so extrinsic fibers are produced by uh, periodontal ligament and fibroblast whereas the intrinsic cementum which is seen in the cementum matrix formed by the cementoblast okay so two types of collagen fibers and which has highest fluoride content so cementum has the highest fluoride content and it is readily decalcifies in the presence of acidic condition so it is easily calcifiable and it has highest fluoride content because of its uh, lower crystallinity of mineral component now the non collagenous uh, parts we have uh, proteins which play a very important role in matrix deposition initiation and control of mineralization and matrix remodeling basic non collagenous proteins are uh, bone siloprotein, osteopontin, tenacin, fibronectin, osteocalcin. Few of them we had seen in uh, periodontal ligament and proteoglycans also we had seen chondroitin sulfate, hyaluronic acid, heparin sulfate. So, such uh, proteoglycans are also seen in non collagenous matter. So, collagen we were discussing extrinsic and intrinsic. So, now I talked about non collagenous matter. And we have few growth factors and other cementum derived growth factors now we'll move on to the classification this is very important a cellular and cellular type 
so SLLR type which is the uh, term is a little bit unfortunate because as a living tissue cells uh, which are an integral part so it is a integral part of a living tissue why acellular because uh, some of the layers do not uh, contain um, the cells in its lacunae so that is why it's got this name acellular cementum is the first one to be formed and sharpie fibers makes the most of its structures and uh, it forms during root formation before the tooth reaches the occlusal plane and it covers the cervical one third cervical one third or the coronal portion of the root it does not contain any cell which is more calcified which the formation is slow and arrangement of collagen fibers are more organized okay so it is the first one to be formed mainly sharpie fibers some layers do not incorporate the cell one third of the uh, cervical or the coronal root portion it is more calcified formation is slow and or collagen fibers are more organized in nature so what about cellular cementum cellular cementum forms after the eruption of tooth once it reaches the occlusal plane okay so its formation is also in response to the functional demand so when there is a functional load heavy load there will be more cellular cementum deposition to bear the functional load and sharpie's fibers occupy a very small proportion contains cementocytes in lacunae this cementocytes is not present in a cellular that is why it is got this name and contain uh, these cementocytes which communicate each other with canaliculi okay so there will be communication using canaliculi and two third of the apex part so from this part to this part is cellular cementum and this to this a cellular cementum okay so this is a two third of root portion okay this is cellular um this little bit portion a cellular and its deposition is more rapid and collagen fibers are irregularly arranged so we have another classification that is shorter and page give uh, page put forward this classification it is based on the location morphology and histologic appearance so let's see these five classification the first one is a cellular fibrillar cementum or aac a cellular extrinsic fiber cementum aefc cellular intrinsic fiber cementum cifc cellular mixed stratified cementum cmsc and intermediate cementum so it is based on the presence of cell that is a cellular a cellular the first two component first two types the next two type is cellular and cellular it has cells and where it is located few are intrinsic few are extrinsic and one is mixed so always study with connection based on the types of cell and based on the location and morphology so it will be easy don't just by heart this so let's see one by one so what is a cellular a fibrillar cementum okay so this is formed at the most cervical enamel border cervical enamel border following completion of pre repti enamel maturation and sometimes also during tooth eruption it is probably secreted by cementoblast so it is formed here okay where it is formed most cervical enamel border after completion of pre repti enamel maturation there are two types of maturation post repti maturation and pre repti maturation so post repti maturation takes longer period after the eruption so the enamel will take up minerals from the saliva and gcf that is post repti maturation pre repti maturation before eruption so it happens or it seen after following the completion of pre repti maturation and sometimes also during the tooth eruption that is a cellular a fibrillar without any cells without any fibers fine now we have a cellular extrinsic fiber cementum so it forms both pre and post eruptively it is secreted by fibroblast okay this is secreted by cementoblast aefc secreted by fibroblast on the apical portion of the root it comprises a portion of the mixed fiber cementum okay so here it is comprised of mixed fiber cementum otherwise it is a cellular extrinsic fiber cementum 
now we have cellular intrinsic fiber cement so what is extrinsic what is intrinsic i talked here in the beginning so hope you remember what is extrinsic and what is intrinsic so cellular intrinsic fiber cement is a third type so it is formed both pre and post eruptively it is synthesized by cementoblast but does not contain extrinsic sharpies fiber okay hope you remember the extrinsic sharpie fibers so where there is intrinsic is written only intrinsic fiber extrinsic is about sharpies fiber so without any sharpies fiber so these are formed or synthesized by cementoblast just like a cellular a fibrillar cementum and it does not contain extrinsic sharpies fibers and the fourth one is cellular mixed uh, cellular mixed strat stratified cementum which is formed by both cementoblast and fibroblast okay so it is combination of cellular intrinsic fiber cementum and a cellular extrinsic fiber cementum and we have the fifth one also intermediate type so intermediate type mostly seen at cemento dentinal junction so we have the five types aac aefc cifc cmsc and intermediate type so this a cellular a fibrillar cementum there is no fibers the cells are absent because it is a cellular no fibers formed by cementoblast location at coronal cementum the cellular extrinsic fiber cementum densely packed sharpies fibers because extrinsic fibers so sharpies fibers there is no cell because it is a cellular formed by fibroblast and cementoblast okay and uh, location cervical third of root cellular intrinsic fiber cementum fibers are intrinsic cells are there present because it is cellular formed by cementoblast location resorption lacunae and the next one cmsc fibers extrinsic sharpies and intrinsic fibers cells are present formed by fibroblast and cementoblast location apical one third of root and forcation intermediate cells are uh, remnants of hardwick sheath and location cemento dentinal junction now let's move on to the cementogenesis so formation of cementum is known as cementogenesis so again i tell you if you don't know the bell stage in detail it is very difficult to understand the cementogenesis so if you are studying gingiva periodontal ligament alveolar bone cementum so whatever you are studying you need to have a very concrete base on the formation of tooth so if you have a very a uh, good concept in formation of tooth it's very easy to understand all the formation the periodontal uh, components let it be periodontal ligament cementum alveolar bone or gingiva because it is all a single unit so cementum formation takes place along the root okay so this is a root portion so it takes place along the uh, entire root so at the advancing root edge hardwick's epithelial root sheath or hers h e r s so it is a approximated so advanced bell stage collapsing of uh, the stratum intermedium uh, happens and the both outer enamel epithelium and inner enamel epithelium it approximated and it is becoming a hardwick's epithelial root sheath so along the uh, root side it forming a sheath which is derived from extension of inner and outer enamel epithelium and this is possibly sends an inductive message to the ectomesenchymal cells of pulp okay so the pulp of ectomesenchymal cells now differentiate into odontoblast okay and produce a layer of predentin along the thinner aspect of hers so when this hers induct induct a message here the dental pulp will produce odontoblast along the inner aspect of hardwick's epithelial root sheath okay so this is hardwick's epithelial root sheath this is a advanced bell stage i just made a small portion of it so once the dentin is uh, for dentin formation is underway which breaks the hardwick's epithelial root sheath so it is now known as 
epithelial rest of molasses. So we have seen the same scenario in periodontal ligament after the dental pad, dental sac, it is giving rise to more collagen fibers and forming the periodontal ligament. So what happens here is the inner layer of dental follicle comes in contact with the pre-dentin. So dental follicle is here, dental papilla is here. So we hope you remember that bell stage inside dental papilla, outside dental follicle or dental sac. So after the Hardwick's epithelial root sheath breaks and it becomes epithelial rest of molasses, the follicle which is present outside it will come in contact with the pre-dendine. So this is the dental papilla, it will come in contact with pre-dendine. So once it contact with the pre-dendine, what happens? The cells of dental follicle now differentiate into cementoblast, which are the main cells responsible for cementum formation. So, the cementum will be formed here, cementoblast, okay. So, that is how it forms. Hardwick's epithelial root sheath was there. When pre-dentine is formed from the dental papilla, that is inside, okay. Cementum is outside and dentine is inside. Formed, the Hardwick's epithelial root sheath breaks. So, that through that breakage, the dental papilla enters and it differentiate into cementoblast and the cementum will be laid. So cementoblast synthesize organic matrix which is uncalcified and called as cementoid tissue or pre-cementum. So that is the uncalcified first part or a first form of cementum which is being laid out. So this is the cementoid tissue or pre-cementum. So it is uncalcified. It has the name pre-cementum, but it is uncalcified. It is also known as cementoid. Okay, it might be asked for a short note. Cementoid tissue or pre-cementum. Uh, so that is about the cementogenesis. Hope you understood what is the concept. Now we move on to the mineralization. Mineralization begins at the depth of pre-cementum. So hydroxyapatite crystals are deposited first between and then within the collagen fibrils by a process that is identical to the mineralization of bone tissue. It is the same as the bone mineralization. Usually the width of this pre-cementum is around uh, th 3 to 5 micrometer and this process of establishing an appropriate condition for crystallization and growth of the individual crystals in cementum which is uh, normally are extremely slow process and it extend over a period of several months so it is a very slow process mineralization so the development of cementum has been subdivided into two stage one is pre-functional and the functional stage so pre-functional portion of cementum is formed during the root development and is extremely long lasting process okay the pre-functional so functional is uh, starts when the tooth is about to reach the occlusal level and is associated with the attachment of root to the surrounding bone and it continues throughout the life it is mainly happening uh, or it is during the stage of adaptive and reparative process so when there is uh, functional changes there is a lot of functional load will be there for the masticatory function and other functions so the functional development is a continuous process and there will be continuous adaptive and reparative processes the cellular cementum we have seen based on the functional demand cellular, dem cellular cementum will be uh, response to the biological uh, changes or biological or functional demands of the cementum so that's about uh, the first part I finished uh, the basic uh, features physical characteristics the basic type cellular and cellular the differences and the shorter classification five types and the cementogenesis uh, hope you remember the Hardwick's epithelial root sheath and how it is formed and the pre cementum and cementoid tissue and the mineralization we have two stages pre-functional and functional now uh, the next part i'll be covering about uh, the cells mainly cementoblasts and cementocytes cemento enamel junction and basic functions of cementum